Today, let us pray for our own personal conversion and growth in holiness. Mary is a teacher of true holiness and a model. The Catholic Catechism reminds us that what is taught about Mary in the church always points us closer to Jesus Christ. And I quote, What the Catholic faith believes about Mary is based on what it believes about Christ. And what it teaches about Mary illumines in turn its faith in Christ. God sent forth his son, but to prepare a body for him, he wanted the free cooperation of a creature. For this, from all eternity, God chose for the mother of his son, a daughter of Israel, a young Jewish woman of Nazareth in Galilee, a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Seeking the intercession of the woman whose free consent to the invitation of the Lord, given through an angel, brought heaven to earth and earth to heaven, let us surrender our own will now to the will of God. Let us pray for the grace we need to direct our freedom always toward Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us ask for the grace to turn away from sin those wrong choices which are an abuse of freedom and freely turn instead toward the Lord. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. And in those words taught to the children by the angel who appeared to them, we pray. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sin. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Beloved Father, through the life, death, and resurrection of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, we have become your adopted sons and daughters. Through baptism, we are now members of his body, the church, which is your family. Our Savior Jesus taught us that whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. We thank you that that promise includes each one of us. So as members of the family of Jesus, we now turn to you in prayer as our Father, Abba. Before your Son and our Savior gave up the last drop of his sacred blood and breathed his very last breath to set us free from sin and from death, he turned to his beloved mother at the foot of the cross and he spoke these words, Woman, behold your Son. Then he said to the disciple whom he loved with a special affection, John, these words, Behold your mother. Throughout the history of the church and the Christian tradition, theologians and mystics, popes and saints have all viewed John as representing each one of us. So the last gift that Jesus gave to us before giving himself fully was his mother to be our mother. And the mother of Jesus is the mother of his church, and we are members of that church. Now, Father, in your loving plan of salvation, you promised through the prophets of Israel that a virgin would conceive and bear a son who would be called Emmanuel. God is with us. And you taught us to hope for the fullness of salvation. You fulfilled your promise. You gave us the complete fulfillment of that hope. As the Apostle Paul taught in the fullness of time, you chose a woman born under the law to redeem us and make us your sons and daughters. That humble virgin whom you chose is Mary. Her yes, her fiat, brought heaven to earth and earth to heaven. She responded to the message of your angel and all of human history was changed. And she is now a part of that great cloud of witnesses who are gathered in your eternal communion of love. And she prays for each one of us in the body of her son, the church. She participates in his ongoing redemption, his plan to bring all men and women to faith. And she holds a special place of honor and veneration. She's a messenger of his mercy, calling the whole world to turn away from sin and turned toward Jesus to be converted, made holy and whole, made new in him. And in that role, in your plan of salvation, she appeared to some whose hearts are simple and childlike and open to the command of your Holy Spirit. 
In her appearance to the three children of Fatima, she warned of what would occur if men and women and nations made the wrong choice, refusing to repent, refusing to turn away from sin and turn toward your son Jesus, but always with the goal of conversion. Like her son who said, let the children come to me, his mother Mary often appears to children. We believe that she appeared to Lucia, Jacinto, and Francisco in the fields outside of Fatima, Portugal in 1917 at a very pivotal time in history. And she gave them a series of messages accompanied by a miracle which continued to inspire and move men and women and nations to conversion to Jesus. Oh, how we need sincere, heartfelt, and life-changing repentance and conversion today, Father. So through her intercession, the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima, we pray for the ongoing conversion of Russia. And I pray for the conversion of my own nation, the United States. Now here, add your intention. Pray for the conversion of your nation. And through her intercession, we pray for the graces we need to continue to turn away from sin and be more deeply converted to Jesus. And dear Father, in the name of Jesus and under the maternal care of Mary, his mother, under her title of Our Lady of Fatima, I now present my own personal intention. Finally, as the family of God, let us all join in praying that beloved prayer which includes the words the angel spoke to the mother of the Lord, followed by the heartfelt cry of believers through the centuries who seek her assistance, her prayer, and her intercession for their lives and the lives of nations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.